You're listening to Audiology. Support our work on Patreon, and be sure to submit your requests for topics in the comments below. Part 1 Introduction The White Rose was a pacifist resistance group in Nazi Germany, formed by six individuals from the University of Munich. Students Willy Graf, Christoph Probst, Alexander Schmorell, Hans Scholl, his sister Sophie Scholl, and their professor Kurt Huber. Their campaign against the Nazi government involved distributing anonymous pamphlets and painting graffiti, beginning on June 27, 1942, in Munich and coming to an abrupt end with their capture by the Gestapo on February 18, 1943. Members of the group, including those who continued to disseminate the leaflets, were subjected to the Nazis' kangaroo court proceedings, with many facing imprisonment and execution. Hans and Sophie Scholl, along with Christoph Probst, were quickly put to death by guillotine on February 22, 1943, just four days following their apprehension. Sophie Scholl famously disrupted the proceedings of their sham trial, where none of the accused were allowed to properly defend themselves. The White Rose's pamphlets, initially distributed around Munich, were eventually carried to other German cities, particularly in the South. In a dramatic twist, Allied forces airdropped their sixth pamphlet in July 1943. Overall, the group produced six leaflets, totaling around 15,000 copies, vehemently criticizing the Nazi regime's tyranny and genocidal actions, including the explicit condemnation of the mass murder of Jews in the second pamphlet. Before their arrest, the group was in the process of forming alliances with other anti-Nazi factions, such as the Kreisau Circle, and the Red Orchestra's Schulze Boysen Harnack group. Nowadays, the legacy of the White Rose endures both in Germany and around the globe as a symbol of courageous dissent. Part 2 Members and Supporters The heart of the White Rose resistance group was formed by a cluster of students from the University of Munich, which included Hans Scholl, Alexander Schmorell, Willy Graf, Christoph Probst, and their professor Kurt Huber who specialized in philosophy and musicology. Hans Scholl's sister, Sophie, later became an integral part of the group. They received help from various individuals such as Ote Eicher and others, with most helpers being in their early 20s. Alexander Schmorell learned from Wilhelm Geyer how to craft the stencils they used for their anti-Nazi graffiti. The group's activities were financially supported by Eugen Grimminger from Stuttgart. Grimminger was caught on March 2, 1943, convicted of treason in April 1943, and remained in jail until April 1945. His wife, Jenny, tragically died at Auschwitz-Birkenau on presumed date of December 2, 1943. Tilly Hahn, Grimminger's secretary, not only invested her own money into the White Rose, but also frequently transported materials such as stationery and a duplicating machine from Stuttgart to Munich for them. Moreover, a separate cohort of students from Ulm, including friends and family members of Sophie Scholl, were involved in spreading the group's pamphlets and faced trial for it. In Hamburg, another faction of students formed the White Rose Hamburg, echoing the Munich group's resistance against the Nazis by spreading their leaflets. Part 3. Historical and Intellectual Background Germany in 1942 Jürgen Wittgenstein, a member of the anti-Nazi group White Rose, recounted the oppressive nature of life in Nazi Germany. He indicated that the Nazi party had its grip on every aspect of German society, including the media, military, law enforcement, judicial system, communication networks, education system, and cultural as well as religious institutions. This control extended to the mental and ideological shaping of young Germans, starting from early childhood to adolescence through systems like the Hitler Youth, aiming for total domination of thoughts and beliefs. People were pressured to report even their own family members for any comments against the state or its leaders. The resistance efforts of the White Rose began in late 1942, during a period when the tides of war were shifting and German military advances were halting. The significant defeat at Stalingrad in February 1943 was a massive blow to the Nazi military. Despite the tight control of information, the leaflet operation of the White Rose remained undetected by the authorities for quite some time. 
When siblings Hans and Sophie Scholl were caught distributing flyers at the University of Munich, they were treated with extreme brutality. The court that sentenced them, the People's Court, Volksgerichtshof, was driven by party ideology rather than law, and its verdicts were later deemed illegitimate and considered judicial executions. Social Background The core members of the White Rose, including the Schall siblings, Christoph Probst, Willy Graf, and Alexander Schmorell, were well-educated students from the Munich University with affluent, independent-minded parents. Schmorell, who was Russian-born and a native Russian speaker, deepened his friendship with Hans Scholl through university connections, which also led to Hans meeting Christoph Probst. Schmorell and Probst had known each other since their school days. Due to the rigorous Nazi racial laws and policies, Probst and Schmorell experienced early personal impacts from the Nazi regime which would eventually contribute to their resistance efforts. The German Youth Movement and the Hitler Youth The German Youth Movement, which started in the late 19th century, greatly influenced German youths, promoting a return to nature, camaraderie, and adventure, while emphasizing nonconformity and traditional cultural values. Some organizations within this movement had romantic and adventurous ideals, like the DJ 1.11, established by Eberhard Kubel. Members of the White Rose, including Christoph Probst, were part of these youth organizations that valued independent thought. The Nazis leveraged some elements of this youth movement for their own youth organizations, blending outdoor activities with ideological conditioning. Initially, many young people, including Hans and Sophie Scholl, enthusiastically joined the Nazi youth organizations mistakenly believing in a shared community purpose to the concern of their parents. However, by 1936, the Nazis had banned all non-party youth groups. Hans and Willy Graf faced arrest for their involvement in these now prohibited organizations. Hans's early participation in a subsequent accusation of homosexual conduct also reflect the complex social dynamics of the youth movements during that era, which sometimes included same-sex attachments and resulted in persecution. Religion. The members of the White Rose were driven by a diverse range of spiritual and ethical beliefs and accepted individuals from all walks of life. Their convictions stemmed from various religious traditions, including Catholic, Orthodox Christianity, Anthroposophy, and Buddhism. The Shal siblings, in particular, engaged deeply with Christian texts and philosophies in their personal correspondences. A strong moral conscience to differentiate right from wrong was central to their philosophy and actions against the Nazi regime. Mentors and Role Models The members of the White Rose were influenced by several key figures who openly criticized Nazi policy. Catholic Bishop August von Galen's denunciation of Nazi euthanasia policies prompted Hans and Sophie Scholl to reproduce and distribute his words. Mentor figures such as Karl Muth, who facilitated an understanding of the Jewish plight and spoke against Nazism, and Kurt Huber, a university professor who provided subtle political critiques through his lectures, also inspired their resistance efforts. Experience on the World War II Eastern Front The members of the White Rose were interrupted from their medical studies to serve on the Eastern Front, where the harsh realities of war and the atrocities committed against Jews and the local population deeply impacted them. Alexander Schmorell's ability to speak Russian enabled him to communicate with locals and better understand their suffering. These first-hand experiences reinforced their disillusionment with the Nazi regime and strengthened their resolve to act against it, despite understanding the grave risks they faced, including the threat of death. Part 4. Origin of the Name During questioning by the Gestapo, Hans Scholl offered various accounts regarding how the group, the White Rose, got its name. He mentioned the possibility of being influenced by an emotional connection to a 19th century poem titled The White Rose by the German poet Clemens Brentano. There are also theories that the inspiration for the name could have come from Cultivo Una Rosa Blanca, a poem by the Cuban poet Jose Marti, or from B. Traven's novel titled Die Weisse Rose, The White Rose, which was known to have been read by Hans Scholl and his comrade Alex Schmorell. 
They indicated that the choice of the white rose as their emblem was meant to symbolize the virtue and innocence confronting evil. If the name indeed originated from Traven's book, it's possible that Hans Scholl deliberately avoided giving a clear answer during his interrogation to protect Josef Sungen. As an opponent of the Nazi regime, Sungen, who ran a bookstore, provided a secure location for the members of the White Rose to gather and exchange information and also occasionally assisted them financially. Aware of the risks involved, Sungen secretly kept a collection of prohibited books at his bookstore and even hid such books during their printing. Part 5 Actions The Leaflets and Graffiti Following their time serving on the Eastern Front and learning about the atrocities occurring in Poland and the Soviet Union, Hans Scholl and Alexander Schmorell felt an urgent need to resist. Between late June and mid-July of 1942, they crafted the first four anti-Nazi pamphlets. These writings were filled with references to a range of sources, including the Bible, classical philosophy, and well-known German poets, all intended to resonate with the educated elite of Germany, whom they believed would be swayed by the same principles that motivated them. They distributed these pamphlets by placing them in public phone booths, sending them directly to academics and students, and passing them to various universities through couriers. However, their advocacy was put on hold from July 23rd to October 30th, 1942, when Scholl, Schmorell, and another member, Graf, were called back to serve on the Soviet front. When activities resumed in the fall of 1942, Hans Scholl's sister, Sophie, discovered her brother's involvement and joined their cause. The group, known as the White Rose, expanded with the addition of Willy Graf and, by the end of December, Kurt Huber. By January 1943, they were ready to widen their reach with the fifth pamphlet, titled Appeal to All Germans. Produced in several thousands of copies using a manual duplicator, this document was spread out even wider, reaching major cities across Germany and even to Vienna and Innsbruck. The language in these writings shifted to appeal to a broader audience, becoming more confrontational. This shift reflected the group's realization that Germany was on a path to defeat. As stated in their pamphlets, directly challenging Hitler's ongoing war and calling for the end of nationalism and militarism, they adamantly pressed for support of a resistance movement dedicated to freedoms and against the oppression by totalitarian regimes, envisioning these ideals as the cornerstone for a new Europe. At the end of January 1943, the catastrophic German defeat at Stalingrad deeply affected the national psyche and boosted resistance efforts within German-occupied territories. That same month, members of the White Rose were further motivated by disturbances at Munich University, catalyzed by inflammatory comments from Nazi official Paul Giesler. Following the official announcement of the loss at Stalingrad, the group crafted their final and sixth leaflet, which took on a more nationalist tone, invoking the disaster at Stalingrad to call for the toppling of Hitler's tyranny. Additionally, on three separate occasions in February 1943, key members of the White Rose, including Schmorell, the Schall siblings, and Graf, engaged in a bold act of defiance, inscribing anti-Hitler and pro-freedom graffiti on university and other public buildings in Munich signaling their unwavering commitment to their cause and the wider resistance movement. First Leaflet of the White Rose Isn't it true that every honest German is ashamed of his government these days? Who among us has any conception of the dimensions of shame that will befall us and our children when one day the veil has fallen from our eyes and the most horrible of crimes, crimes that infinitely outdistance every human measure, reach the light of day. Second Leaflet of the White Rose Since the conquest of Poland, 300,000 Jews have been murdered in this country in the most bestial way. The German people slumber on in dull, stupid sleep and encourage the fascist criminals. Each wants to be exonerated of guilt. Each one continues on his way with the most placid, calm conscience. But he cannot be exonerated. He is guilty, guilty, guilty. Third Leaflet of the White Rose Why do you allow these men who are in power to rob you step by step, openly and in secret, 
of one domain of your rights after another, until one day nothing, nothing at all will be left but a mechanized state system presided over by criminals and drunks? Is your spirit already so crushed by abuse that you forget it is your right, or rather your moral duty to eliminate this system? Part 6. Capture Gestapo Interrogation and Trial on February 18, 1943, Hans and Sophie Scholl hurriedly left numerous anti-Nazi leaflets in the hallways of their university, hoping students would discover them after lectures. Before they could leave, the Schalls realized they still had leftovers in their suitcase. In an impulsive act, Sophie threw the remaining papers from the top floor into the lobby below, an act that was seen by Jacob Schmid, a janitor, who then reported them to the Gestapo. Subsequently, the university building was secured, leading to the Shawl's arrest. During the arrest, Hans had a draft of another leaflet on him, written by their associate Christoph Probst. Despite Hans's attempt to dispose of it, the Gestapo reconstructed the torn draft and connected it to Probst through similar handwriting found during a search of Hans's flat. Christoph Probst was apprehended two days later on February 20th. Initially, the Gestapo's lead investigator, Robert Moore, suspected Sophie was innocent, but once Hans confessed, Sophie took full responsibility, trying to shield their comrades. All three, members of the resistance group known as the White Rose, were put on trial in the notorious Volksgerichtshof on February 22, 1943, and were convicted of treason. They were quickly sentenced to death by Roland Freisler, the presiding judge, and executed that day. Sophie was executed first, followed by Hans, who cried out, long live freedom, before his execution, and then Christoph. Willy Graf had already been detained on the same day as the Shoals, and despite severe interrogations, he protected his colleagues until he was executed in October that year. Alexander Schmorell attempted to flee to Switzerland, but was arrested on February 24th upon his return to Munich. Kurt Huber was taken into custody on February 26th, unveiling his involvement with the White Rose. The second trial of White Rose members occurred on April 19, 1943. This trial included Hans Herzl, Susanna Herzl, and several others, while last-minute additions included Trout Lafrenz, Gisela Schertling, and Katharina Shudikoff. Willy Graf, Kurt Huber, and Alexander Schmorell received death sentences. Others got prison terms, and unexpectedly, Falk Harnack was acquitted despite his siblings' execution by the Nazis. Schmorell and Huber were executed on July 13, 1943. Willie Graf was tortured for months but divulged no names and was executed on October 12, 1943. Hans Conrad Leipold, who distributed White Rose leaflets and faced racial persecution due to his Jewish heritage, was executed on January 29, 1945. The third trial, initially set for Adolf Hitler's birthday, had to be rescheduled and it took place on July 13, 1943, with most defendants, including those betrayed by Gisela Schertling, who retracted her statements, being acquitted. Trout Lafrenz, who was re-arrested and faced imminent execution towards the war's end, was spared when the Allies liberated her prison just three days before her trial. Part 7. Reactions in Germany and Abroad During World War II the aspirations of the members of the White Rose Resistance Group that the loss at Stalingrad might motivate widespread dissent against Hitler's government and the war were not realized. Instead, the Nazi regime leveraged the defeat to rally Germans around a more intensified war effort. In an unfortunate twist of fate, the key figures of the White Rose, siblings Sophie and Hans Scholl, along with Willy Graf, were apprehended on the same day, February 18th, 1943, as Nazi Minister of Propaganda Joseph Goebbels stirred up public fervor with his Sportpalast speech, which was received with roaring approval. Following the capture of the Scholl siblings and their comrade Christoph Probst, authorities issued a nationwide manhunt for their associate, Alexander Schmorell. Public condemnation of the group's betrayal by their own university soon followed on February 22, 1943. The White Rose members were branded as traitors and cowards in official records held by the Gestapo and Nazi legal bodies. Reports of their seizure and execution were tersely conveyed by the Nazi Party's own Volkischer Beobachter and Munich's local papers on February 23rd 
as mere dispatch of miscreants. Yet the web of allies the White Rose had woven was vast enough that the truth about their resistance persisted despite official attempts at suppression. The campaign against those linked to the White Rose carried on until the close of the war, with German publications periodically noting further arrests and penalties. By March 15, 1943, intelligence services of the SS voiced alarm over the distribution of the group's pamphlets causing considerable unrest and that the public was not surrendering these materials to the authorities as promptly as in the past. The White Rose's resistance was given its first mention in the American press on April 18, 1943, by the New York Times. Despite some inaccuracies in recording the events of the resistance, trials, and executions, this coverage was followed by Thomas Mann, the German Nobel laureate, who honored their bravery in his anti Nazi broadcasts via the BBC on June 27, 1943. Furthermore, a Soviet produced pamphlet, mistakenly attributed to the National Committee for a Free Germany by later researchers, celebrated the White Rose's struggle for liberation. The text of the White Rose's sixth pamphlet reached the UK through the efforts of German lawyer and Kreisau Circle member Helmuth James Graf von Moltke, who smuggled it out via Scandinavia. In July 1943, the Allies dropped copies over Germany, retitled as The Manifesto of the Students of Munich. The story of the White Rose succeeded in disseminating through wartime Germany, making the group's sacrifice widely known. Despite the fact that this and other resistance efforts did not incite a mass movement against the oppressive regime, the courageous actions of the White Rose remained a powerful symbol and provided encouragement for those who continued to resist in whatever ways they could as the war dragged on. Part 8. Memorials and Legacy after the downfall of Hitler's regime, the White Rose became a symbol of defiance against despotism in Germany's collective memory, admired for its members' lack of desire for personal gain or recognition. Their actions became so infamous that the composer Karl Orff, desiring to absolve himself during post-war investigations, falsely claimed to be a co-founder of the group, even though he only had ties to one member, Huber, and was never actually involved in their activities. On February 5, 2012, the Orthodox Church recognized Alexander Schmorell as a new martyr. The University Square in Munich, where the main building is situated, is named Geschwister Schollplatz in honor of siblings Hans and Sophie Scholl. The square facing it bears the name Professor Huberplatz. In front of the university and on the opposite side of Ludwigstrasse are two grand fountains, respectively dedicated to Hans and Sophie Scholl and Professor Huber. Various locations around Germany, including schools and streets, honor the members of the White Rose. In the 17th arrondissement of Paris, there's a secondary school named Collège La Rose Blanche after the White Rose, and a nearby public park pays tribute to Hans and Sophie Scholl. One of the most prestigious German literary awards is known as the Geschwister Scholl Prize, and there's even an asteroid called 7571 Weisser Rose named after the group. In Munich, the Bundeswehr Medical Academy's large lecture hall was named after Hans Scholl in 2012, and a Bundeswehr barracks near Munich was named after Christoph Probst in 2019, in honor of his centenary. The last known surviving member of the White Rose, Trauta La Friends, celebrated her 100th birthday on May 3, 2019, receiving Germany's Order of Merit for her role in the resistance. She passed away on March 6, 2023. In a somewhat controversial turn, a conspiracy theorist group called the White Rose emerged during the COVID-19 pandemic, using the original group's name to suggest parallels between their own actions and the peaceful resistance of the White Rose against Nazism. They argue against government-imposed measures meant to curb the pandemic, spreading their messages and expanding their reach worldwide through the internet, unlike the original group, which was confined to Germany. Despite utilizing a similar tactic of spreading stickers in public areas to rally support, this contemporary group's connection to the original White Rose is purely nominal. Neither Trout La Friends, the last of the original members, nor any relatives or descendants of the group have endorsed or associated with the modern conspiracy theorists' misappropriation of the White Rose name.